Hello and welcome to the video. I imagine that many channels are going to be releasing a video on this particular thing right about now. <laughs> We've all been lucky enough to have this radio for a handful of days. This is the new Radio Master Boxer and quite excited that they give it a normal name rather than a string of letters and numbers. This is their latest radio. The last time we looked at a radio from Radio Master was the Zorro back in January 2020. That was the smaller, more compact handheld unit. Now, those of you that watch the channel know that I like the Radio Master radios. For many of us, it's become the default choice with the Radio Master TX16S for many becoming the choice of radio if you don't want to go and buy a more proprietary system. However, lots of pilots find the TX16S too big, too heavy. Things like the full color screen, all the extra buttons and trims and all the gadgetry that's on here just make for a very, very big radio and it's probably overkill for what lots of pilots need. So I've been asking Radio Master for quite a while to bring out a smaller radio. And if I put this thing by the side of a TX16S, you can see it is significantly smaller and significantly lighter as well. So if you've been looking at the TX16S and saying, okay, I get it, but it's just too blooming big, we now have an option that's a regular radio that still has the majority of buttons and controls that most pilots are going to need. A spiritual successor to the Tyrannus feels more like a spiritual successor to something like the QX7, if you remember that from the days when FreeSky used to make those kind of radios. But let me jump on the table and let me go through all the specs and show you what this radio actually has here. So the radio itself is available in three different flavors. There's one with built-in Express LRS, or a four-in-one, which is what I have here, or a single CC2500 multi-protocol. So that's gonna give you free sky and a couple of other protocols if that's what you want. Has a different processor in here, STM32 VGT6 processor with one meg of RAM, and it does come with Edge TX. Now the internal ELRS module if you get that one is capable of the fastest speeds that kind of 1000 hertz refresh rate that the latest ones have do remember though that when you use those fastest speeds you do sacrifice range adjustable elrs rf output uh, so that's going to be 30 dbm max in fcc mode or 20 dbm max in eu lbt four in one or cc 2500 only version is capable up to 20 dbm rf output and it has QC 3.0 fast charging with the port at the bottom, USB-C. Now let's go through the switches and have a look at this. Now there are the six position switches above the screen. I really like them down here, having them at the top of the radio like they are on the TX16S. I find them a little bit more out of the way. This is, I find much easier to hit when you are flying. However, lots of pilots use these for other things as opposed to flight modes, because the thing is they're not very tactile. They're hard to see if you're flying FPV because you need something that you're gonna feel with your fingertip. In terms of the switches on the top, the two outer ones are two position switches, and then the two inner ones are three position switches. Then we have two rotary controls with a nice firm indent in the middle that feel really good. On the top, we have a latching switch for SE. So that's typically gonna be your arm switch, I guess, if you're gonna run something like iNav or Betaflight or similar. Connection for your trainer port. You have the USB data port out here at the top. And then we have a headphone jack. And then here on the right-hand side, we have a momentary switch for buzzer or pre-arming or whatever you want to use. Apart from that, on the front, there are the four trims. No extra trims on here, like on its larger brother. And then the rest of the buttons are pretty standard layout for a radio of this type. System, model over here, return, the two page buttons, and the telemetry page, as well as the rotating control with a press button. This feels really, really nice. All of the controls uh, feel quite high quality considering the price of the radio. It's quite surprising. Although the plastics on here 
um, some could say they feel a, a little bit cheap, they're actually finished really nicely. The other thing to talk about here are the gimbals. These are full-sized version 4 Hall Effect gimbals as standard. You can put those beautiful AG01 CNC Hall Effect gimbals in here if you really want. Nothing on the sides. There are um, removable grips that you can put in here. A big change this time is the fact that they have put a fabric handle on here. Still getting my head around that. Hopefully they do offer other versions as well. In reality, it actually works quite nicely. Uh, we have a full-size JR bay, which I am very, very happy about for that. Lots of modules that I have here, you know, ELRS modules and Crossfire and Tracer and all kinds of other things are made for this bay. The other nice thing is that under here, there is an optional battery. This doesn't come with it. Uh, this is the 6200 milliamp hour pack. You can buy this separately and it takes up pretty much all the space. Uh, it actually comes with a little adapter for two 18650 batteries to power it with. The thing that I really impress with here is what you can do is you can put the battery in. Let me just turn it over. Oh, underneath you can see that's where the SD card is. Slightly different way of installing it. So unfortunately you can't get to it just by opening it up. But check this out. So what they've done is they have these two little recesses in the battery cover. So you can route the battery cable and have it coming out the back. Why would you want to do that? Well, there's quite a few modules kicking around these days that actually would quite like to have the power, um, an auxiliary power supply going into the module somewhere. And it's usually an XT30. I like the fact that not only have they come up with a nice pack that you can use to plug in to power the battery, but they've thought about that as a cute little idea as well. So if you want to use those higher powers on those external modules that will necessitate the use of an external battery, you're good to go does come with an SD card, so let's power it on, show you what it looks like when it fires up. Standard stuff, press and hold the power button, make sure the switches are in the default position. Welcome to HTX. Nice, clear LEDs, no LED bleed across from the different buttons as you press it, and the screen itself is very reminiscent of the standard radios that have this stuff, things like the FreeSky QX7. In fact, I'm getting exactly that kind of vibe off this thing. Going into everything, the screen works really nicely. It's nice and clear. It's very easy to read. So you don't have to squint at this thing. If you're used to the bit old radio screens, I love the fact that it's old now, five years old, this actually works really, really nicely. And because of the, all the buttons on here, even though it's HTX, navigation is pretty straightforward too. It's not difficult for you to get around and do all the regular stuff that you would do in any other radio. Interestingly, it's come with a couple of models set up with uh, one for an FPV drone, a Delta and a Heli. I'm guessing that means, does it have a wizard? Let's scroll down to there, press and hold enter, say create model, and it's just created a basic model. So in this version of STX on the radio, it doesn't yet have a model wizard. I wonder what version we're running on. Let's come out of there, go into the system menu, page across. Yeah, we are running Edge TX version 2.8. So well done, Radio Master. That's pretty impressive. Um, so that has got the latest and greatest version. So if you want wizards, then although that stuff is on the radios with a bigger screen, see my video the other day about Edge TX 2.8. It isn't on here. Couple of specs on this. Uh, this is 235 by 178 by 77 millimeters. Weight is 533 grams. This is significantly smaller than the Radio Master TX16S. And not only is it very, very comfortable, thanks to those kind of gentle recesses in the back that you kind of curl your fingers around for us thumbers, it's also pretty simple to get there. Uh, you probably, if you had very small hands, doing uh, pinching would potentially be a little bit difficult to get right into the middle. Display on this thing, um, it's absolutely what you'd expect on this. It's the standard 128 by 64 monochrome LCD display 
and uh, I, I actually really like this display. I know lots of pilots who find the color screen a little bit of a waste of time, really. So what do I like on here? Well, I like the fact, this is gonna sound really weird, that they've called it Boxer. Why do I like the fact they call it Boxer? Too many things in the hobby sounds like they should be the names of droids in things like Star Wars, TX-16S, and things like that. The fact it's called a Boxer is great. Give things sensible names, and then for all of us, who have to repeat this kind of stuff, <laughs> or when you're looking for something, you've got a better chance of figuring out what you're talking about. The simple screen, again, I'm a big fan of. I like this, it works really well. The contrast is great. It works great in all lighting conditions. It's backlit and it's very, very clear and easy to see. You can still run your Lua scripts on here, like your iNav and your Yapu telemetry scripts. They'll work fine, but it means that you haven't got a great big color screen if you're not one of those pilots that isn't constantly using live telemetry apps and widgets and things like that, and you just isn't bothered about the whole touch thing. I do really like the small form factor and the price point. I will talk about this in a minute, but I've been wanting Radio Master to make a more compact radio since they brought the TX-16 out. And I'm quite impressed with the build quality. Again, I've only had this a couple of days and I've been playing with it. However, this seems to just feel really nice and all the controls, all the switches and everything actually feel much better than I was expecting for this price point. I really like the idea of the fact that they thought about how you're gonna power those external modules that need external power. Things like this show that they're really looking at the modern hobby and designing in some cute touches. And I also really like the fact that the six position switches are in a far more sensible place to get to. So when you're flying, you got a chance of reaching down here and selecting different flight mode. Great for those of us who fly things like Ardu Copter and Ardu Pilot on things like Wings. There are a couple of things that I would have really liked. These aren't really criticisms. There's no one radio that's gonna be perfect for everybody. But for me, I would have liked a couple more switches. I tend to fly, and I have done forever, this three position switch over here is my mode switch. This is my arming switch. I know this gives a very smooth finish to the top of the radio, which means things like the case is, um, is good. But for me, I would have liked two more switches in those positions that would have been good while we're talking about switches i would also have preferred the three positions to be on the outside and the two positions to be in the middle at least then i could have had my arming switch and my mode switch be these two and then this these two switches on the radios that i fly tend to be auto trim and auto tune for a lot of my inav wings it could have been nice to have a slider or two as well. Uh, there are these two rotary controls, but those are the kind of things that you have to take your hands off the sticks to do. So if you're just maybe using them to trim a mix on a complicated model, maybe you're, you have a glider and you're using this to kind of tweak the amount of offset on the rudder for that particular setup, they work fine. However, for things like pan and tilt setups and stuff like that, having some kind of rotary controls can be handy. Be aware that isn't on this radio. I don't mind this strap here at the back. It does mean that it lies nice and flat. However, it'd be interesting to see if they offer a different type of strap in the future, because it does mean that when you put it down on um, the bench or anything, it does lie completely flat. Those that like it at an angle, you know, you obviously don't have that action. Gimbal settings, adjustable through the front of the radio, through these screws, and you do get that stuff in the bag. Now the bag itself that it comes with is a really cute way to transport it, and it will come with a gimbal. Mine didn't come with a gimbal, because it was just the sample unit that was shipped out without them, but this is an absolutely cracking gimbal, made of soft, rubberized plastic, has the Radio Master logo on it, and it kind of goes over and not only protects the gimbals, but also kind of keeps the switches away from being pressed and damaged as well. Some kind of wireless trainer option and things like easy, easy ways to add stuff like Bluetooth would be good. Again, there's no easy access to any kind of external UARTs like there are on the TS-16S. So all those people who like to do funky things like adding GPSs to their radios and Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff, that other bigger radio is probably a better option. So in summary, this is a very nice radio, particularly for the price from Radio Master. I do like the form factor. Now there's no such thing as a perfect radio for everybody. And as I've just explained, for me, I would have liked a couple more switches and a couple more features. It's probably one step below 
my perfect radio. To me, it does feel like this is Radio Master's kind of QX7 to the TX16S's much bigger radio, if some of you remember that. And this gives me a very similar vibe to that QX7 radio. This is going to be a cracking option if you are coming into the hobby and you're looking at maybe you, you might want to fly quads initially, but you're thinking about wings and planes and all kinds of other stuff. And it's also going to be handy for those who might want a second radio that's still a full-size radio to do something like teaching somebody else to fly, maybe having a cable between this and their TX16S to do lessons to teach people stuff. I still think there is an opportunity for Radio Master to bring out a TX16S Mini, which is similar form factor to this, but has those extra couple of switches and those extra pieces too. I've got my fingers crossed that they do that. That's the day when my Tyrannus, I think, will finally go in its box for good. Now, because of the issues with getting my hands on this, again, thanks FedEx, I haven't yet had a chance to put it through its paces. So I'm going to be doing that over the next week or two. But if you have a question about this radio, do pop it down below. If I get enough questions, I'm very tempted to do a follow-up video to specifically answer those on this radio. And with the contacts I've got up at Radio Master, if you ask me something I don't know the answer to, then I can ask those guys as well. So in summary, thumbs up. Initial impressions from this, this is actually a nice piece of kit for those who don't want the big chunky TX16S or the kind of more handheld gamer style Zorro. This fits nicely in the middle. Well done, Radio Master. Impressed. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.